Greetings from the Society of Radio Theater. If there is anyone listening who has not already read Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, then I envy your experience of hearing this exciting adventure story for the very first time. You'll make the acquaintance of one of the most famous characters in literature, that fascinating pirate Long John Silver, and you'll meet young Jim Hawkins, who lived such an adventure such as all kids dream about. Plus, Treasure Island, if you did not know, was the first picture that Walt Disney produced without his cartoon characters. And now, celebrating its 74th anniversary, we raise the curtain on Treasure Island. I'm leaving for London in the morning. They have convinced me, the squire and Dr. Livesey, that my education is in sad need of repair, that it is time, I thought, of becoming a gentleman. I'm not reluctant to go. It'll be a new world, and I will learn a great deal. But there is so much I've already learned, and the thought that I may forget the past, the high adventure of my boyhood, has urged me in the writing of this journal. On the one hand, it was a needless labour. For how shall I ever forget Long Don Silver and their voyage at the Hispaniola? On the other hand, time has a way of clouding the past, and it is a comfort to know that the whole story will always be here, between the covers of this journal. The year was 1765, and then, as now, the Admiral Bunbow Inn belonged to my mother. The winds still blow, the seas still crash, just as they did that late afternoon, when the door opened and I saw a stranger on the threshold. Rum, boy. Glass of double rum. Yes, sir. Rum, sir. Well, this here is a quiet cove for certain. Much company, mate? Oh, no, sir. Not much, sir. Uh, who'd be the owner here? Uh, my mother. She... she's gone into town, sir. Oh. You're all alone, eh? What's your name? Uh, Jim Hawkins, sir. Tell me, Jim. Ever notice a seafaring man in this here grog shop? Name of Bones, mate. Captain William Bones. Bones, sir? No matter, boy. No matter. Just fill up the glass. He drank, threw me a coin, and left the inn. When I was sure he was gone, I dashed up the stairs. And then he asked for you, Captain. By name, sir. Captain William Bones. What sort of a man, Jim? A one-legged man? Oh, no, sir. But he had a terrible scar. A scar on his face. Black Dog. When you see his Black Dog, boy, you can be sure the man with the one leg ain't far off. Rum, Jim. Fetch me rum. But I can't, sir. I promised Dr. Livesey. Come on, boy. I said rum. But you know what he told you. He he said it would kill you. Rum for the blood, boy. I got to get my strength again. I dared not leave the inn. Yet, I couldn't stand there watching the old captain die before my eyes. I'd have to go for Dr. Livesey. I ran to the door. But, as I flung it open, a man loomed up before me. Before I could move, his fingers, like iron, closed on my wrist. Now then, boy, take me to Captain Billy Bones, or I'll break your arm. The man was blind. In his free hand, he carried a knobby stick, lifted now as if ready to strike. I led him across the room, but Captain Bones scarcely raised his eyes. He just sat there, as in a trance. This is Captain Bones, sir. It's a friend come a-callin', Bill. It's Pew. Pew. With a gift from your old shipmates. Blind Pew. He dropped a piece of paper on the table. Then he grinned, and with no further word, found his way alone out of the door. On the scrap of paper was a black spot, and two words. Until dark, it says, Jim. The black spot. Until dark. But I... I don't know what you mean. They won't get it out of me. What's rightful mine is mine. Give me a hand, mate. We'll do that one-legged man yet. Help me, Jim. Back to my room. 
Help me. Shaking and gasping, he opened an old sea chest. Then, with the knife, he slit the lining of the cover. From it, he took a map. He staggered back for the stairs, but he never reached them. Captain! I'm done, young Jim. Bring help, boy. Yes, sir, right away. Wait. Take the map. Keep the map. They may be back for it before you are, but but not a word about it, you hear? Yes, sir. Good boy. No mention of the map, and I'll go shares with you. Skip now, matey. And fast. It was dark when I returned to the inn with Squire Tromney and Dr. Livesey. The place had been ransacked. We found Captain Bones on the stairs. He was dead. Well, Livesey, what's your verdict? He wasn't killed, Squire. He died of shock. <laughs> or rum. I wonder now what those rascals wanted of him. I... I think I can tell you, sir. Now that he's dead, it... It was this, sir. Bless my soul, Jim. It's a map. Odds my life. Look at what it says, Doctor. Flint's map. Flint? Flint the pirate? How do you come by that? He gave it to me, sir. He... He said we'd share. Share what, Jim? Pirate treasure, Livesey. Flint's gold. Oh, come now, Squire. Why, everyone knows of the ships he plundered. But our departed friend seems to be the only one who knew where the treasure's been hid. So that's what the scoundrels wanted. The map of Flint's treasure island. Ha, 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 ha. You're a trump, young Hawkins. Mark my word, you will share. Listen to this, Jim. Spy Glass Hill, it says. Bearing south-southeast a finger trunk tree. Fence two cables south. Go on, go on, man. Go on, go on, go on. Bear to larboard. Due northeast to the foot of White Crag. Ten paces east. <gasps> a chest of 700,000 pounds. Bless my soul. Bless my soul. Why, with favorable winds and a clue like this, we'll have Flint's gold within the year. And the two of you are coming with me. I'll fit out a ship. I'll... You speak for yourself, Squire. I have a practice. Hang your practice. Do you think I'd go to sea without a ship's doctor? Furthermore, you assume this map is authentic? Huh. Assume? Do I? Then why were those ruffians here? And why is Captain Bones dead? Tell the truth, Livesey. You're frightened. Scared. Scared as a rabbit. There is only one man I am afraid of. Name the dog. Name him. You. You can't hold your tongue. Blast you. I'll be as silent as the grave. And I'm off to Bristol in the morning. Do you know, Jim? I believe he means it. I'll find a ship in Bristol, and then you and Jim can join me. You'll make a famous cabin boy, Jim. I'll see to that. Ah, his mother may have something to say about that. Oh, she'd listen to you, sir, if, if she knew you were going. To be sure he's going. I'll wager my wig on it. Squire Trelawney kept his wig. I was still in the delirium of joy when I found myself, many days later, on the wharves of Bristol. At my side was Dr. Livesey, and standing before us, with all the brass of the Lord Admiral himself, Squire Trelawney. Well, we're here, Squire. <laughs> Fools that we are. Look out there in the bay. Hmm? There she rides, gentlemen. A ship! You've got a ship! Three masts, square rigged, with the name Hispaniola. Hispaniola. Ah, she'll bring back all the pirate gold that we can put aboard her. No talk of treasure, I beg you. Not in a public place. Oh, no, 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 no. To be sure, mum's the word. Mum's the word. Well, now, when do we go on board? Well, you better ask Captain Smollett. Five days, he's been selecting a crew. Uh, five days. Cautious, hmm? Outrageous, hey? When I threatened to step in, he told me to hire a sea cook. So by Jove, I did. A chef from Paris, I presume? Oh, none of your little jokes, Livesey. Fellow by the name of Long John Silver. I didn't waste good time poring over his credentials either. All I needed was the taste of his ham. And his butter's eggs. That's his tavern over there, over yonder. The Spyglass Inn. Follow us, Livesey. Judge for yourself. It was then I had my first sight of Long John Silver. A great bulk of a man, brown and leathery from years at sea. But he did not walk a sailor's walk, and I soon saw why. 
his right leg was gone. He walked on a peg with a crutch and, and suddenly I heard the voice of Captain Bones again. What sort of a man, Jim? A one-legged man? But if my fears were immediate, they were as quickly dispelled in the cheery greetings and the friendly manner of Long John Silver. Top of the morning, gentlemen. Sit ye down, if ye kindly will. For you, squire, kidney pie. Whew. Piping hot. And this be for Dr. Livesey. You, you know my name? Squire's told me that much about you too. It comes naturally too. And this will be young Master Hawkins. Yes, sir. Hawkins. Proper seafaring name it is. You, um, you run your house well, man. I, listen, often I see fruit in a tavern. It's a rule of health. Which same I learned while sailing under the immortal Stanley. God rest his soul. You hear that? Under Admiral Stanley. Aye, Your Honor. Kiberan Bay. You favor the Admiral yourself, Squire, if I may say so. <laughs> Why you and him can make up your minds like that? Oh, do I know? I've noticed it afore, too. Would it surprise me none to hear you say, Heave up the anchor, lads. We sails on the hour. Yes, but you can't sail without a crew, Mr. Silver, hey? You think there wasn't an honest seaman to be found in all Bristol? I begs to differ, sir. If I make so bold, why, there's a full cargo of my old shipmates becalmed right here in town. Sound young men inside, your honor. If some were scarred in the services of England and them with no pensions neither. Could they be had at short notice? Say, uh, 20 of them? Aye, sir. But they may not be pretty enough for the modern taste, sir. And just what does that mean? It means, sir, that the beauty of their youth is faded in giving to themselves, to their king and country. Appearances be hanged. Bring in a crew come sundown, and I, for one, will be greatly obliged. Well, sir, I will say this, sir. I knows every seaman in these here parts, like the palm of this hand. Excuse me, Mr. Silver? Aye, Master Hawkins. Did, did you ever know Captain Billy Bones? Bones? Billy Bones? <laughs> what ship did he sell on matey? He... he was a pirate, I think. Lord love thee, lad. Them as sailed with the Admiral had no speaking acquaintances with pirates. Aye, look at the lad, squire, and doctor, sir. The spitting image of myself when I was his age. Head full of pirates. But he'll find that the sea be mostly hard work, and the biggest satisfaction a man gets in doing his duty. And now, begging your pardon, sirs, I suggest you fill up while the victuals is still hot. And there was no doubt about it. Long John Silver was the finest cook who had ever sailed the seas. When the meal was over, the squire was all for taking us aboard the Hispaniola. But Mr. Silver had a different thought. I've been thinking, squire. Could you spare me the services of Master Hawkins? Just for today, I mean. Oh, but what on earth do you- I've more on my hands putting the inn in ship shape for the new owner, sir. And there's the crew you've been asking me to round up. Oh yes, to be sure. Stay here, Jim, and lend him a hand. But, but sir- This way, Dr. Livesey. Don't worry, Jim. We'll be back for you before night. Now then, lad, suppose you come with me into the galley. We could talk free there, each to the other. Piece of it! Piece of it! Why? Why, that's a parrot in there! And an evil-minded bird is she. Belay! You old bum boat, belay! Ah, piece of it! Piece of it! I said belay! Dead men tell no tales! Swearing blue fire in front of a gentleman! Is... is she yours? Hi, <sighs> lad. Captain Flint, I calls her. After the famous buccaneer. Twas the pirates who taught her how to swear. If you want to know about pirates, Jim, ask Captain Flint. <laughs> Only I'll wager as how you can't make her talk. Go on, lad, try. Pirates, Captain Flint. Pirates. Piece of it. Piece of it. Ah! You did it! <laughs> you made her talk. Strike me, boy. Smart as paint you be. Piece of it. Piece of it. Oh, Mr. Silver, look. There, out the window. Hi, lad. That man, there on the key. Be, uh, be someone you know? Black dog. He... He's a pirate. I know he is. Pirate? I'll call all hands and run him down. Ah, piece of it. Oh, hurry, please. Don't let him get away. There be a pirate, the lad says. Do your duty, men. The men left the tap room. Through the window, I saw them hail Black Dog. He turned quickly and ran. The others after him. But I could not help thinking that 
that they were letting him escape. He got away, lad. Too quick he was. A pirate, eh? What was he doing here, I wonder? I... I don't know. Black dog, eh? Ah, it's the eight. Black dog. I'll black dog him! That... that's a pistol. Aye, and I'll load it, matey. Here, feel the balance. Gee, it's... it's a fine pistol, Mr. Silver. Mind the trigger guard. Solid silver. Special made for Admiral Stanley, who gave it to me, rest him, for loyal and conspicuous service. You think you could shoot? Oh, yes, sir. Ha, I might have known. Smart as paint, just like I said. Put the pistol in your pocket, boy, and if you clams lights on there, black dog, repel borders. Yes, sir. Ah, 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 ah. Piece of eight. Piece of eight. You see, I know a lad I can trust whilst I'm doing my duty by the squire. You're leaving? And when I come back, I'll have a crew. And you'll have a sidearm. You mean to keep? That's my meaning, matey. Now, be we shipmates. Shipmates! It's a fine, bold shake the hand you got, Master Hawkins. Clear sailing, matey. He can move amazingly fast, wooden leg and all. And as I watched him striding down the street, I wondered if in all England there was another boy half so fortunate. Out in the harbour rode the good ship Hispaniola. Our voyage, buried treasure, and Long John Silver was my friend. That afternoon, Dr. Livesey took me out to the ship, and then, at sundown, Long Don Silver came aboard. He had kept his word and brought a crew. <laughs> like I said, Squire, they ain't pretty, but they knows the sea. Line up, chums, so his honor can look ye over. Oh, they were an ugly lot, all right. Captain Smollett wanted no part of them. But the squire insisted, and every man of them was signed aboard. And then the captain asked the squire and Dr. Livesey to step into his cabin. I'll speak plain, gentlemen. I don't like this cruise, and I don't like the men. Well, possibly, sir. You don't like your employer either. We need trustworthy crew, not one recruited out of the muck by a ship's cook. The ship's cook was acting under my orders. And is the cook responsible for the ship's safety? Uh, well, well, I'm, I must say... Uh, Captain Smollett, we are all concerned with the ship's safety now. Now, what do you propose? The whereabouts of any treasure map are to be kept strictly secret even from myself and my mate, Mr. Arrow. The firearms are moved from the forward hold and stored aft, here. Surely you don't anticipate mutiny. Well, if I did, I wouldn't put out to sea at all. Oh. Well, Trelawney? Anything, if it'll get us out to sea. Agreed, then. You'll find, gentlemen, that I'll do my duty. I can vouch also for Mr. Arrow, my mate, and the five men in the crew I had previously signed. And when can we sail? We should be ready by midnight. Oh, very well. Come on, Livesey. Hang it all, man. Why do you take this fellow's part? Because I think our captain's a very conscientious man. Well, I find his conduct un-English. Downright un-English. That night, in the full of the moon, the sails of Hispaniola bellied out to the wind. Our voyage had begun. I stood, watching the lights of Bristol disappear. And then I was aware that someone stood behind me, and a hand clamped down on my shoulder. The car, Jim Hawkins. It's many a day before you see Bristol Harbor again. And you'll see other sights, matey. Things you'll never forget so long as you'll be alive. In just a few moments, our stars will return with Act 2 of Treasure Island. But first, let's talk about what the Society of Radio Theatre is bringing you for the rest of 2024. In October, we invite you to join Dr. Watson as he tells us about an exciting adventure he shared with the greatest detective of all time, Sherlock Holmes in The Case of the Haunted Chateau. And in December, our Christmas present to you will be one of the great Christmas classics, wrapped in a covering of laughter, tied with a bright ribbon of good humor, and decorated with sparkling stars. It's a very special presentation of Miracle on 34th Street. More details about what makes it so special coming soon. And now, Act 2 of Treasure Island. 
We've been at sea for almost a month without incident. Until one afternoon, Captain Smollett had a reason to call all hands on deck. Mr. Arrow, the mate, had found a pistol on one of the seamen. Since this is the first offence, I shall let it go unpunished. But let it happen again, and the penalty will be 15 lashes. Crew dismissed, Mr. Arrow. If one man was guilty, I was no less so. But I had a friend to turn to, Long John Silver. Play! Make them mark the plank! Make them mark the plank! Piece of eight! Piece of eight! So... so I'll have to turn in my pistol too, won't I? Uh, here, now here. It'd go hard with Long John if you was to turn it in now. But why? Well, here's a captain with a suspicious turn of mind. And here I am handing out firearms to an able-bodied seaman like yourself. Oh, I'd do no harm with it. Would you keep it out of sight? Oh, yes. Always. And you ain't giving to no rum drinking neither, are you? Oh, no, sir. Nor quarrelsome neither. So my advice, Jim Hawkins, is keep the pistol. And no harm to nobody. Whatever you say, I'll do. Thank you, mate. Thank you. Fifteen lashes, just because I want to protect myself. Avast! It's time you learned, George Mary. Just who is captain? And who gives the orders? A captain it was. A captain who wouldn't have that mate around. Sticking his nose into Foxhole's business. You lay a finger on Mr. Arrow. And you'll answer to me, George. Personal. Mr. Arrow, be a friend of Long John Silver. And I plan to take care of him. Be that clear to you, mates? They'll obey you, John. Even before Mr. Arrow, I guess. Was you and me worth our salt, matey? We'd think out a way to sweeten Mr. Arrow's disposition. Like her something special for supper. A plum pudding, maybe, for a cold, stormy night. Stormy night? She's clouding up, Jim. We'll rock proper come evening. Only plum duff ain't no better than bilge water without rum. Can't you get rum for cooking? And have Captain suspect me of sneaking double grog? Then why don't I ask Squire for some? Without Captain knowing? I'm sure I could. Blow me down. You're good in Jim. I seen that from the start. Get the rum, boy. Bring it here. We ran into weather that night, just as Long John said we would. The crew in the forecastle were slow to change watch. Mr. Arrow came below to rouse them out. Starboard watch on deck. Lively now. Starboard watch on deck. On deck. Mr. Arrow, could you spare me a moment, sir? Well, if you'll step into the galley, sir. Plum Duff, made special. Just for you. I'm obliged, Mr. Silver. Then have your fill, sir. And this here bottle is what gives it its flavor. Half full it is. So sweeten it, sir, to suit your taste. Aye, sir, to suit your taste. The bottle of rum was empty when Mr. Arrow went up on deck. By morning, the storm was over. It was Squire Trelawney who told me the news. A tragedy, Jim. A tragedy. A, a great tragedy. Squire, what happened? Mr. Arrow, last night in the storm, apparently was washed overboard. The Hispaniola sailed on, and even I began to wonder if this long voyage would never ever end. It was a sailor named Gray, one of the six recruited by Captain Smollett. You gave me hope. Ah, don't fret, boy. We'll sight land soon. The signs have come. What signs, Mr. Gray? For one thing, the crews turn quarrelsome. Then the beer's all gone, and water cakes crawling. Sure sign, boy, of a landfall. But there's still some apples left in the barrel. Well, when the last ones ate, we'll sight land for sure. Then I'm going below and eat them all. I went below to the apple barrel. It was a huge barrel, and, being almost empty, I found I had to climb in to get the last few that were left. A moment later, I heard voices, the crew, and among them, Long John Silver. 
Sorry, but something to tell us, Mr. Mary. Well, what are your evil thoughts? We can take this ship right now. What are we waiting for? Aye, since me and Hans joined you, the only ones on the captain's side is Gray and Joyce and Hunter. And I say, cut their throats. And I say there'll be no killing till Eyes gives the word. You're growing soft, John. When we was with Flint, you was all cut and ripped. You thick-headed swap! Who got rid of Mr. Arrow so quiet, no one even suspected? Not even young Hawkins, who brought me the rum for the job. And who gets your firearms the same way when the time comes? All we want to know is what we're waiting for. We're waiting while a first-class navigator, like Captain Smollett, sails this here bum boat to our destination. We can steer a course, but who's the set one? Such being the case, use weights till I give the signal. Eating foxhole's grub, while them in cabins has meats and wine and rum. When a thirst be upon you, George Mary, bite into an apple, real savage. I've a mind to chew one now myself. There be the barrel, John, but you gotta reach for him now. You just drop a knife on one, Mr. Hands, and I'll pluck it out. I heard his knife slip out of the sheath. I saw the blade poised over me, but it never descended. On deck, Mr. Gray had sighted land. Land ho! Land ho! I climbed, shaking from the barrel, and ran to Captain Smollett's cabin. To him, the squire, and Dr. Livesey, I told what I'd overheard. Long John Silver, I just can't believe it. I never questioned his loyalty, Captain Smollett, sir. I'm a fool. Well, no more than I, squire. Well, it appears there are precious few of us now. I make it eight of us against twenty of them. But you forgot Jim Hawkins, sir. Nine of us, then. Well, we all have the firearms. Can't we surprise them? That's my plan. Once we get them all ashore, as I see it, they'll not make their move until we found the treasure. Meanwhile, give them no cause for alarm. Jim, you've brought us this one. I wonder, can you do it a second time? Could you keep your ears open, lad? Stay friends with Silver. Stay friends with... with him, sir. Well, can you, boy? Yes, sir. I'll stay friends with him. Good lad. Well... I'd best call all hands and see about an anchorage. Now then, have any of you ever seen that island before? I have, sir. I was cooked once on a trader as watered here. Do you remember the anchorage, Mr. Silver? Yonder, sir. There in that inlet. You give me a strong pull of the longboat, and I'll guide this ship in like a lamb. Good. Stand by to drop anchor and lower the boat. Any questions? If you please, sir. Could I go along with Mr. Silver? Well, Mr. Silver? I'd be happy to take him, sir. Young Hawkins could try his hand on the tiller. Permission granted. You did well, Jim. Well, what did he mean about guiding the ship? The longboat will tow us into Anchorage. Silver will need most of the crew to man the oars. Those that remain aboard ship will be our prisoners. Yes, but, but what if they rush us first? That, Squire is the chance we'll have to take. Find Silver Jim. Stay close to him, boy. And good luck. Yes, sir. An hour later, the longboat was in the water, pulling the Hispaniola closer and closer to the shore. Whenever I could, I looked behind, trying to catch a glimpse of what was going on on board. The man at the tiller, Master Hawkins, keeps his eye on the shore. Yes, sir. Lift your oars. Drop your anchor, Captain, sir. This here's your spot. I heard the splash of the anchor behind us, followed almost at once by shouts of warning from Captain Smollett. On your guard, men! They're drawing knives! What's he yelling about? That fool! That fool George Mary didn't wait for my signal. We're in for it now, boys. Pull for the shore! Turn about and come alongside. Turn about or I'll shoot. With young Master Hawkins at my sides, Fire that musket, and I'll cut his throat! Mary, you blundering squid! Can you hear me? Aye, I hear you, ya. Them shots was just a ward. Then lie low till a treaty be made, and this time, follow orders! You dare to hold that boy, and I'll have you- Begging your pardon, sir. I ain't finished with what I got to say. I'll give you one hour to send a boat ashore with Flint's map 
and give yourself up to Mr. Mary. So be it if you want to see young Master Huckings alive. Do as he says, Jim. We'll save you. Don't think it's so hard, lady. Why, it's lucky you come along with old John here, or he'd have nothing to bargain with. Oh, let go of me. Why, I even put my knife away. Now there, see? <gasps> come back here, you. After him, you swabs. I jumped into the shallow water and struggled for shore. It was heavily wooded beyond the beach, but how long I could elude them, I didn't know. I could hear them crashing through the bush after me, but gradually, the sound of my pursuers grew distant. They'd gone inland, and later, a wisp of far off smoke revealed they were making camp. As I turned for the shore, something sprang at me from the bushes. It was a figure out of a nightmare. I drew the pistol Silver had given me and- No! No! Don't shoot! Don't! I'm poor Ben Gunn, I am. You wouldn't harm poor Ben Gunn. Out of my terror, I saw a human being. Scrawny, long-haired and bearded, his bones covered with pieces of tattered canvas. He was on his knees now, imploring me. It's just me! Poor old Ben Gunn. What hasn't spoken to a Christian these five years now? Five years? Were, were you shipwrecked? Nay, mate. Marooned. Tell me, that ship, would that be Flint's ship? No, Flint's dead. But I seen his men. I seen them come ashore. Some of them are Flint's men, but they got aboard by trickery. Aye. And is there among them a man with one leg? Long John Silver. And I hate oh, him. He's come back. I am as good as dead. It was him as marooned me. What be your tack now, young master? Well, if if you could help me row a longboat. Boat, says you. Ben Gunn's your man, says I. What might you call yourself, mate? Jim. Well now, Jim, you just follow Ben Gunn. Not a sign of anyone on the beach, Squire. Not that I can see. Pray God the boy's still alive. What about the stockade at the end of the cove? It appears empty and without arms. I'm sure those cutthroats went inland. Behind that stockade, we stand a chance of rescuing young Hawkins. Precisely. We'll leave two men aboard. There's no way our prisoners can reach the deck. Two men will suffice. We'll load the jolly boat with supplies and come back and forth to relieve the guards. Good. Then let's be at it. Stand by, Mr. Gray, to stock the jolly boat. Ben Gunn had led me to a cluster of rocks. Carefully hidden among them was a tiny boat. Made her with my own hands, I did. Bamboo, Jim, and goat skins. <gasps> but first, says I, we'll see if the coast be clear of Flint's men. It was then we saw the jolly boat heading for shore. They were coming for me. I'd be saved. Coming ashore, says you. But what might that be, says I. They're on the ship. Look here, Jim. Men crawling out of the portholes, climbing up to the deck. It was all too true. The prisoners, trapped in the foxhole, were escaping through portholes. There were a few shots and silence. Then, from the mainmast, I saw the skull and bones catch the breeze. Silver's men had taken over our ship. By now, our friends in the dolly boat had reached shore and rushed for the safety of the stockade. Meanwhile, Silver had led the men on shore back to the beach, back to the longboat, out of range of the stockade. Unmolested, they were making their way to the ship. Now they'll get the guns, and the ammunition, and the food. Everything but the map. Map? Says you. What map? Never mind. Come along, Ben. No. My friends won't harm you. I promise. If your captain wants to see Ben Gunn, tell him to come tonight alone to the top of Spyglass Hill and tell him this. Them as hides can find and them as finds can hide. <laughs> In the stockade, I was welcomed as one returned from the dead. 
I told them at once of my meeting with Ben Gunn. And what's your opinion, lad? Do you think this creature's sane? I... I think he is, Squire. Why would he want you to come back after dark, Captain Smollett? Safety, of course. Hmm. And right now we may expect visitors ourselves. They're coming from the ship, Captain. Aye. The longboat's full of them. Can you load the gun, Jim? Yes, sir. I, I think so. Let them come, by Jove. They'll find us ready for them. They're silver, sir, with a flag of truce. Truce, eh? Take your positions, men. I'll see what he wants. Open the gate, Mr. Gray. Aye, sir. Now close it and shoot with the first false move. Flag of truce, Captain, sir. Flag of truce. And what does that mean, Mr. Silver? Captain Silver to come aboard, sir, and make terms. Captain Silver? Who's he? It's me, sir. Those poor lads yonder have chosen me, Captain, sir, after your desertion of the ship. Stand to cover, lads, and wait for me. Open the gate, Mr. Gray. You'll have patience, Captain, sir, seeing as I makes me way on one pin and a crutch. Ah, sweet place you have here, to be sure. And there's Jim. <laughs> How be my little matey, eh? I've nothing to say to you. And squire and doctor. Well, sirs, the long and short of it be this. I has the ship. I has the men. I has the armaments. Only what I ain't got be Flint's map. So here be my terms. You give us their map, and you can keep your lives. We're the vibe the stores, and I give me affidavit to stop the first ship I see and send it back here to pick you up. Your word, Silver? Handsomer, you couldn't ask for. Then here are my terms. If you come here, one by one, unarmed, I'll clap you all in irons and take you home to stand fair trial. Well spoken, Captain Smollett. Now listen to me, John Silver. You can't find the treasure, you can't sail the ship, and your cowardly scum can't fight, so get out of here, double quick. So be it, Captain, and Squire, so be it. But before an hour's out, you'll be begging help from me. And them what die will be the lucky ones. In a few moments' time, you'll hear the third and final act of Treasure Island. But first, a note on what Playful Fox Productions is bringing to the stage for the rest of 2024. This August, step through the wardrobe into a world of magic and adventure with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe coming to Kitchener and Fergus. In September, immerse yourselves in the dark, thrilling tale of Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, coming to Guelph and Hamilton. In October, get ready for a time warp of wild fun and outrageous entertainment with the Rocky Horror Show, coming to Guelph, Fergus, Hamilton, Kitchener-Waterloo, and Brantford. In November, dream big with the vibrant and musical journey of Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And in December, embark on a sweet, whimsical adventure with Roll Dolls, Charlie, and the Chocolate Factory, making its sole stop at the Branford Sanderson Center for the Performing Arts. For tickets and event details, visit our Facebook and Instagram pages. And now, the curtain rises on Act 3 of Treasure Island. Silva and his men attacked us immediately. Fire in the hole! Fire! The stout logs of the stockade held, and we drove them off, though not without cost. Joyce, one of the loyal sailors, lay dead, and Captain Smollett, wounded. Never before were we so grateful for Dr. Livesey. The captain's asleep. He'll be all right in a few days. Do... do you think they'll attack again tonight, sir? I... I, I don't know, Jim. Hard to foresee the end of this. Yes, that's true enough, lad. Therefore, I want you to have the treasure map. It's yours by rights, you know. If that's your wish, squire. And if the worst comes to the worst, don't hesitate to buy your life with it. But they won't drive us out of here in a hurry. Well, they may not even try to, Squire. Well, what's that? Why not? Well, with the high tide, they can bring the shipping closer to shore. And once within cannon range, why, they could level us. Oh, by Jove, so they could. If John Silver thinks of it, blast him. 
And they've got all the boats. Otherwise, I would try to get to the ship and cut the anchor rope. But if we can't stay here in the stockade... Jim, Jim, you spoke of Ben Gunn in a meeting tonight. Perhaps he knows a place where we can hide. I'm sure he does, sir. I'm sure he does. Ha <laughs> ha. Then I'll go looking for Mr. Gunn within the hour. I, too, had a plan. Under cover of darkness, I slipped unnoticed in the stockade and reached the rocks where Ben Gunn kept his little boat. In my belt was a knife. I paddled silently out of the Hispaniola, climbed to the deck, and cut the anchor rope. So it be you, young Master Hawkins. Come to join us evil swabs, is ye? It was Israel hands. I struggled with every ounce of strength and broke away. But as I did, the map of Treasure Island fell from my shirt. Flint's map! So it was you what had it. I grabbed it from the deck and leaped for the rigging. I climbed higher and higher, but Hans was behind me. When I could go no further, I drew the pistol from my pocket. Stay where you are, Mr. Hans. So you got a pistol, Master Hawkins? Go down to the deck. <laughs> Just like Silver said, smart as paint. Coming here with me all alone aboard. One more step, Mr. Hans, and, and I'll blow your brains out. <laughs> no, no, matey. Suddenly, he grabbed his knife and threw it. There was a great burst of pain as it pinned my shoulders to the mast. But I pulled the trigger and the body of Israel Hands hurtled into the sea. I clung to the ropes and pulled out the knife. But for moments after, I was unable to move. And I saw that the tide was carrying the ship towards shore. Somehow... I climbed down and made my way to the beach. Dr. Livesey? Squire? It's me, Jim. Open the gates, please. Dr. Livesey? Strike me. It's Mady. It's Jim. Silver. I must have fainted. When my senses returned, I was in the stockade. My friends were gone, and in their places stood Long John Silver and his cutthroats. But I made no move to let them know I could hear their talk. He'd been bleeding bad. Someone pinked him for certain. Save me from cutting his throat, the little swab. Avast, George Mary. Stand clear. Avast, is it? Maybe a touch of steel would show Master Hawkins which side he were on. Some others I could name as well. Maybe you think you'd be captain here, eh, George? This here crew would lay a sight more confidence in a captain that's allowed us our say about enemy prisoners. Why, you nuthead! With him bad hurt, they're pulled with the map to save his life. We'll hoist another flag of truce and hail that doctor. Afore this crew takes any more of your orders, we claims our right of counsel. Aye, according to rules. Then have your counsel and be hanged! Jim, Jim, can you hear me? What? Where's Dr. Livesey? And the squire? Ah, they gave us the slip lad during the night. Now lay still. You'll be cared for proper. Old John will here will fetch the doctor. And then, lacking a leg as he did, he climbed with great labor to the top of the stockade, hung a flag of truce, and shouted for Dr. Livesey. Don't fret, boy. You'll see the flag and uh, speak in a seeing things. I just been seeing something myself. The Hispaniola. Beached on the shore. That be your doing, Jim? That be the cause of your hurt? Yes. I cut the anchor rope. Tis a real wicked trick, Jim. And was I you? I'd keep my mouth shut about that. We've finished council, Mr. Silver. This be for you. A piece of paper, is it? With a spot of black on it. And the word, deposed. Wrote very pretty, George. We're choosing a new captain. And do they vote me in? I'll see to it There'll that be no I... voting until the treasure map be disposed of. Until then, the black spot ain't worth a biscuit. Map or no map, we ain't giving up no hostage that we lays hands on treasure. And how be to find same without the map? Silver! Silver! It's him, the doctor. He's seen the flag. Then lay to, all of you. It's young Hawking, sir. He be hurt. 
If Jim's there, bring him out of the stockade. If I set you out yonder, Jim, didn't you give me the affidavit not to slip cable? Yes. Word of honor. Stand by while I parlays. And sharp lookout on all sides. My eyes be on a man who's trying to get a foot in each camp. Him with only one leg. We met some 50 yards from the stockade. As gently as he could, the doctor dressed my wound. Taken the knifing boys, eh, Silver? Not me, sir. Why, if it hadn't been for old Long John, he'd have had his throat cut. He got to board that Hispaniola, sir, which same he's gone and beached. He's what? Jim? Last night, yes. Even so, when I find the lad, have dead he be. I say to myself, John, you've got to save that dear boy. Oh, so Captain Silver wants to join us again, hmm? Sir, I'll be honest and open with ye, as I always am. I do. I think's gold dust of this dear boy. You'd have killed me yourself if you'd had the map, but you'll never get it. I'll die first. But I got the map, Jim. Be this the same, or be it not? Doctor, he's got it! Last night, when I pixie up outside the fort, there the map in your shirt. But old John ain't human, he ain't. He didn't care about saving little matey's life. All he wanted was this here map. And what good's a treasure without a ship to haul it? And what could be a ship, sir, if only to haul me to the hangman? Now was I to further preserve young Hawking's life? Do you think you could save mine? You can save Jim? I could guard the boy from them their scum. But they'll not get up till they seize the treasure dug. Hmm. I want to speak to the boy alone. Speak and be welcome. I'll stand off. Jim. Jim, I don't know how you managed to save us that ship. But I lost the map. Oh, your safety's more important. Now listen. I'll make a quick break to draw their fire. And then, before they have time to reload, start running for the woods. The woods, sir? Yes. We're with Ben Gunn. He knows a dozen hiding places. No. No, I can't. I gave Long John my word. They would have killed me. They would have killed me long before if it hadn't been for him. But Jim, don't... (sighs) Yes, perhaps you're right. All right, Silver. Aye, sir. Now, you stay close to this boy. If we get out alive, I'll do my best to save you. You couldn't say more, was you me own mother? Oh, heaven forbid. Good luck, Jim. Back in the stockade, Long John Silver told the men he had just got the map from Dr. Livesey. And now by thunder, I will resign. Elect anyone you please to be your captain. I'm done with you. At once, the treasure hunt was underway. They followed the map with unholy care, And, in a frenzy, they started to dig, clawing at the ground like animals. In a matter of minutes, they struck the chest. Wild-eyed and gasping, they heaved it to the surface and broke it open. What? Empty. It's gone. Treasure's gone. Stand by for trouble, Jim. Look, one dirty guinea and that's all. There's your 700,000 pounds, Mr. Silver. Hardly worth dividing, is it, George? So you did make a bargain with a doctor. They've been here first. Look at his face, mates. You can see it in his face. Kill him. He sold us out. I'm one against a lot of you. I've got two pistols. And the first one who... Long Don Silver had only fired once. The other shots came from Dr. Livesey, the squire, Mr. Gray, and Ben Gunn. Unprepared for the sudden attack, the pirates were now our prisoners. <laughs> ben Gunn, to think it was you what done me. <laughs> How do, Mr. Silver? Pretty well, I thank you. What happened to Flint's gold, says you? Ben Gunn's cave, says I. <laughs> cave? What cave? It's true enough, Jim. That's where we've been these many hours. It's all there, lad, a treasure beyond dreams. Save one dirty guinea. So it was, just as the squire said, treasure beyond dreams. First came the task of taking our prisoners to the Hispaniola, then the matter of loading the treasure, and after that, back to the shore for Long John Silver. I've been thinking, Captain Spot, as to how you'll ever clear the vessel and get her out to sea again. 
high tide and a stretch of canvas and she'll float off whenever we've a mind. Yes, and, and that brings us to your fate, Mr. Silver. I stands as ever, sir, ready to do me duty, and happy to think I had some small hand in saving young Master Hawkins. And does that clear you of the crime of mutiny? Oh, please, Squire. He did save my life. Then, my boy, you're free to testify on his behalf. You'll have a fair trial in Bristol. And now, Captain, I'll take this scoundrel back to the ship and clap him in irons. But not alone, Squire. Mr. Gray, you and Jim take them in the longboat. Not a move out of you, Silver. None of your monkey shines, mind you. Would you? Permit a word, sir, with, with matey. Talk your fool head off for all I care. Thank you. Thank you kindly, sir. Jim, me lad! I'm thinking of Captain Flint, I am. She be still in the stockade. You take the parrot, boy. Only remember, she can't abide a cage. None of us like cages, Jim. I... I couldn't, Long John. You'd be fond of the bird, matey. Oh, I'd like to keep her, but she'd only remind me of you. Well, no matter. Though I would dearly love to leave a trinket to, a uh, to a lad I respect. Keep your hands in plain sight, Mr. Silver. Me hands, sir? They just be patting the boy, sir. Well, even so, I... Look out! He's got my pistol! Put that down! Put that gun down! Put it down, I say! Patting him I was, sir. And what should I come up with but this? Now, drop your oars. Into the water, Mr. Gray. Jump and swim for it. You too, Squire. Confound you. I'll have you hanged on the ship. If I may be so bold, sir. I'm boring this longboat. So over you go. You, you monster. How can I swim to shore? Just spread ye blubber, squire. Might be as you can float. As for you, Jim. Oh, jump. You don't have to tell me what to do. Belay now. I can't row and steer both. So I'm asking you to set me a true course through the channel. And I'll put you off on yon piece of rock. And if I don't? It's the last thing I'll ever ask of you, matey. I took the tiller. I sat in silence as he rowed desperately. There was a narrow channel. Finally, I saw my chance. I yanked the tiller and drove the boat into a sandbar. You put us onto the bar. Climb over and shove me off. I'll take no orders from you. And you can't do it yourself, can you? Not with one leg. You put me on here. Now you'll shove me off. Or by the powers, I'll crack your neck. They're coming after me in the jolly boat. And they'll take you. And they'll hang you for your crimes. They'll take you to Bristol and... They can't... They can't hang you, John. Jim. Jim boy, Jim. That's it, lad. Chubber nose out. I might have known you'd never let him hang your old shipmate. I'll hoist the bit of sail out yonder. I'll make it safe enough. Goodbye, matey. Good luck to you. He was well out in the open water when the squire and Dr. Livesey reached the sandbar. He... he got away, squire. Oh, well, the sharks may do for him yet. Blast him anyway. I'm as wet as a herring. Blast him indeed, squire. And yet, I can almost find it in my heart to hope that he... makes it. He will, sir. I know he will. Treasure Island was directed by R.C. Scott, adapted by S.H. Barnett, with executive producers Darian Fox and Marissa Wilson Fox, the music directed by Kevin McLeod. Starring Andy Dominic as Long John Silver, Christy Dolson as Jim Hawkins, John Bell as Squire Trelawney, and Jessica Logan as the narrator. Also featuring Kieran Higgs as Black Dog, Ian Lake as Captain Billy Bones, Emily Spicer as Blind Pew, Desmond Nanacy as Dr. Livesey, Everett Spicer as Captain Flint, Robert J. Harrower as Captain Smullett, Keith Chambers as George Mary, William Thiel as Mr. Arrow, Christopher Spicer as Mr. Gray, Ralph Tootin as Anderson, Isaac Petrosky as Hans, and Ryan M. Ciro as Ben Gunn. Be sure to visit us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest from the Society of Radio Theatre, a playful Fox production. <laughs>